Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with our weekly edition. I don't even know what we call this, Scott. You pick them, uh, whatever it is. It's, it's when Scott and I get together and each do our top three college picks. It's called my, two, it's called my consistent two and one finishes. Scott is, uh, is uh, after going one and two the first week, he's gone two and one every week since then, run his record to 13 and eight. I went also two and one last week and uh, evened my record out once again at 10, 10 and one. I came up with a strategy to try to prevent myself from going two and one. So we're going to see what happens. <laughs> uh, Scott, there's usually only one thing that happens when you bitch about going two and one. You go 0 and three. <laughs> I was going to say it, it ain't go three and oh. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. I am just two games behind you in the all important loss column. So we'll see what happens. I'm 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 the I'm basically the Philadelphia Eagles right now with that with that stupid tie on there. So that still counts. I know it does. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, as always, losers walk. So I will uh, I will. Start when you when you go last week, you went one and two last week. Two and one. Two and one. So then, why? Well, we tied. So I guess just it rolls over from the previous one. It's like that's what I was thinking. You, you, yeah, that works for me. No, so I, was thinking, I was thinking it's like golf. You know, yeah, that's I, fine. It's like match play. It's all good. Um, of course, the opposite of where obviously the best player would go first. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just to recap real quick, uh, I had Ohio State to cover. I had uh, Tulane plus twenty, and I had Air Force, and that that pick screwed us both, Scott. Yep. And you had uh, you had Cincinnati plus two and a half. That worked out well. You also had Bama to cover. So uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was solid. I actually had I had Bama as a premium pick there. So mm. now I will say, in fairness, I am a little handicapped doing this because my best plays um, go to the people that pay me money. So I am uh, not a completely armed. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to feel sorry for you for making money on your better. Pay. I understand. I understand. Um, but I'm just a little bit of one hand tied behind my back here. But I do the best I can. So you're missing a third string corner. It, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm going, start, I'm going to start off taking the dog, Scott. We're going to take those uh, San Antonio Roadrunners going up against FAU. Uh, you know, the Roadrunners actually played pretty good defense. They uh, held UAB, BYU, Army, and La Tech 28 points or less. And this FAU offense is dreadful, uh, averaging just 15 points in their two games um, against Charlotte and Marshall. Of course, no shame in, uh, in not winning and scoring much against Marshall. But uh, putting up just a 20, 20 point against Charlotte, no excuse for that. The Owls, they are just 15, 26, and one against the spread as home favorites, including going four and 16 against the number of win coming off of a loss as they are this week. Give me those surprising up and comers. Give me the Roadrunners plus five. Uh, I definitely thought about doing that as well, uh, but I decided not to. Uh, I, I, I do think that line is very questionable, though. Uh, because of the fact that um, Florida Atlanta can't score, as you, as you just alluded to. Um, my first play, I'm going to be looking at a road team in the Big Ten, which is always a dicey one, a road favorite in the Big Ten. Uh, it's going to be on Purdue. Uh, I like the minus seven at minus 110 on bet on the line uh, against uh, Illinois. Uh, main reasons why Purdue, they end up having a very nice home win against Iowa. I know Iowa's probably on pace for a little bit of a down year, but – uh, they moved the ball really well through the air. Uh, O'Connell, he threw two picks, but he's another one of those gunslingers that Purdue has at the quarterback position. I'm a huge fan of David Bell, uh, the wide receiver for Purdue. He's great. Uh, he had 13 receptions, three touchdowns in week one. And the reason why I bring it up is because Illinois against Wisconsin, who's known for being a run-first team, gave up the greatest debut in the history of college football as Mertz went 20 of 21 for, what was it, five touchdowns? Mm -hmm. So they can't stop the pass against Wisconsin. Purdue has better weapons from the receiving court, in my opinion, than Wisconsin. I think – and Illinois also, starting quarterback, uh, Brandon Peters, nice 8 for 19 for 87 passing yards. Uh, I don't think Illinois is any good. The team was expected to be one of the worst teams in the conference. Purdue, I know, uh, taking a road team is never fun the Big Ten. Minus 7, minus 110 on battle online. I'm going to take it. Uh, I think Purdue should score enough points, probably score 28 to 30-something. And I don't think Illinois is going to score more than 17. This offense isn't very good. The defense is not good either. So, for me, I'm going to go with Purdue minus the seven. I'm going to trust the Boilermakers. Yeah, I thought that I thought that Illini team was going to have a little something for Wisconsin there early on. 
Well, they scored uh, one touchdown. It was a defensive score, so the offense got shut out for three quarters. I understand, but they, you know, they get they, they, they get that turnover. That the, the defense is, just lives on turnovers, and that's uh, that's kind of a nice sidelight for a defense. But uh, it's not something you want to base your entire defensive personality around. Is uh, is getting ten turnovers because they do. I know. What, I know Wisconsin has very good defense year in year out. You get shut out. Your quarterback goes eight for nineteen. Like th- th- I don't think this team has any talent offensively, and Purdue. They might turn it over a couple of times, which is concerning. I don't know if Rondell Moore is going to play in this game after missing the first week, which would be a huge boost to the receiving core. But I think you'll agree, even if Iowa was supposed to have a down year, Iowa was usually a pretty good football team, and Purdue beat them. So I, by, set, by four, I think they'll win this game by double digits. Well, surprise, uh, Lovey Smith team is underachieving. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Well, they made a bowl game last year in miracle fashion, uh, miraculous fashion, because nobody saw that coming. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I think this Purdue team's not that bad. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, head to the ACC, Scott, and take a road favorite here, always fun, just like you just did. I'm going to take the uh, Wake Forest Demon Deacons, minus 12 points against the Syracuse Orange. You know, Syracuse had a nice three quarters against Clemson last week, so now we're going to have to have all these lines adjusted. That's bullshit. I think Syracuse is still a terrible team. They're awful on offense before their quarterback got hurt. And the Demon Deacons defense is actually stepped up. They've been playing very well lately. Uh, the Syracuse Orange last in the ACC and scoring 19.8 points per game. I don't think that's going to get it done against the Demon Deacons. I don't think they get to their average. And I think the Demon Deacons can pretty much do what they want against the Syracuse defense. One game does not convince me. Syracuse is still trash. Give me Wake Forest minus 12. One game does not convince you about Syracuse. What about Wake Forest, though? What a, what a nice performance against Virginia Tech. That was yeah. a hell of a job by them. Yeah. They only gave up 16 points to Virginia Tech, who was going nuts offensively. Great job by them. They, they were very good. Running the ball. They, they had a, they have a running back there at Virginia Tech. But a kid came over from KU. Boy, you think Jay Hurts could use him. But uh, he was a little legitimately averaging 10 yards a carry through six games. And yeah. No, you know, they, they, you, you they did a good job. Oh, now I get it. You know, he runs for he runs for five, six, five, six, thirty. Yep, that's how you do it. That's how mm-hmm. you average ten yards a carry right there. So yeah, I like the Deeks in that spot. You got a thought on that one? Uh, no, I I do think that Syracuse has a shot to cover, but at the end of the day, the question is if Cole Pepper is going to turn the ball over a handful of times, which he probably will. So if you're going to lose, Syracuse is going to take care of the ball, which is something that they don't do normally. So that would be the one way I think you would lose is if Syracuse decides to just not turn the ball over for about. I think four. Cole Pepper's bad enough to take care of this for me. No, I agree. I, I'm just saying that would be the one way that I think you do lose is if they Fair. have good Fair ball enough. security. Fair enough. What you got for your second pick? Uh, my second pick was actually something we were discussing before uh, we aired the show. I called an audible on one of my picks. I was looking at the Arkansas State over against uh, Troy, but Troy's starting quarterback might not play, so I'm not interested. And I decided to switch it. I'm going with LSU minus two and a half on the road at minus 109 on DraftKings against Auburn. Uh, I know that it's always a very tough decision to go against Auburn when they're playing in Jordan-Hare Stadium, but as Auburn might be three and two, this team should be one and five, or one and four, I should say. Uh, If you want to look at the results, the Arkansas game, Bo Nix lateral the ball backwards on the spike. That was a joke. Uh, The game against uh, Mississippi last week, uh, you had the guy touch it on the kickoff. Should have been a touchdown for, for Mississippi. So they the referees bailed them out of two games. They should be one and four. But this team isn't good at all. Uh, you think of Auburn, you think of a physical defensive front, a team that's good against the run, a team that can dominate the line of scrimmage. Auburn's allowing 180 rushing yards per game. This team can't stop anybody. They're averaging four – they're giving up 400-plus yards per game. And LSU, even though they are two and two, they looked really good last week against uh, South Carolina. I lost the play today on them, but LSU with a backup quarterback in Finley put up 52 points. This offense is really good. They're averaging 42 points a game. And defensively, they have had their moments where they have been awful, but they did only allow 24 last week. Uh, I know that Coach O called out Bo Pelini, defensive coordinator, uh, going into that South Carolina game saying basically pick it up or you're fired, and the defense picked it up. I don't like Bo Nix at all. I think Bo Nix is a turnover machine. I do understand why Auburn is always a live dog at home. But this team is allowing 180 rushing yards per game. And LSU against South Carolina just ran the ball down their throats. Uh, LSU in that game with Finley quarterback ran for 276 yards. 
with three rushing touchdowns. Plus, Finley's also mobile, so that adds another dimension. I think Auburn's going to be awful against the run once again. I think LSU wins by probably about four to seven points. Okay. You have yeah, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's, that's solid. I, you, you and I are, are uh, holding the same opinion of Bo Nix, and that is very, very little opinion. It's, uh, I, I'm not a fan. and I'm, I think this defense, again, has been overrated. Um, they don't, they the, do the previous years, Bo Nix had good records because I feel like the defense could bail him out. Yep. Situations where he didn't perform in this year, they put him in advantageous situations on the field position battle and everything. The like question that. is, let's just say LSU win this game based on Auburn's okay. defense scores thirty-one points. Do you think Auburn can score more than twenty-eight? You know that's the thing. I, I don't. LSU has terrible pass defense right now. They're giving up three hundred and forty-four yards a game um, through the air. I don't know. If, I don't know if Bonix can actually throw the ball. See, that's the thing. It's you don't know if, if Bo Nix is going to be able to take advantage of that. Um, Bo Nix, every single drop back panics and runs out of the pocket for no reason two seconds after the snap he will stay in the pocket for two seconds and then he will immediately sprint out of the pocket when there's nobody near him in the pocket it's really ridiculous to watch something to keep in mind but no he abandons the pocket as soon as his primary reads not there because he does not know how to go through reads he has no read progressions whatsoever yeah his progressions are terrible um yeah I'm, I, I'm, I think LSU wins uh, I think coach O is better than uh Auburn's head coach so for me I think that if you need a last-minute touchdown to beat Ole Miss, I don't think your team's very good. I think LSU, even though they got off to a bad start, I do think that this team is more talented than Auburn. So I'll go with LSU minus two and a half. Still Mel's on at Auburn? Yeah. There were rumors if they lost to Ole Miss, he would have been fired, but they ended up winning that game. But I think that he lucked out, and uh, I think he kind of has, I don't want to say underachieved or whatever. He's a mediocre SEC coach. He should have he should have taken the money and run a couple of years ago when he was hot. He he had some heat there from Auburn, and I think he could have gotten a little better job. Although they're you know not a ton, but I think he would have been uh, in line for one of those upper echelon jobs. And I think yeah, maybe. But either way, I'm going LSU. All right, very good. I'm going to finish up taking a home dog here in the ACC, Scott. I'm looking at the uh, Louisville Cardinals against those same Virginia Tech Hokies. You know, this is a Virginia Tech team. That uh, you you look at them and they, uh, they 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 do have a lot of offense. However, their defense is a, let's leave a little bit to be desired. They're out gaining foes by just uh, thirty four points per game. Uh, and they are a uh, they are just three and fifteen as a conference road favorite when they're coming off of a conference game. So they don't play well on the road as a favorite. I think the Louisville Cardinals uh, have a statement to make here, and I I like them at home catching those three points. Uh, yeah, I think that that line definitely looks like it's ripe for an ACC upset where the home team just pulls one out, especially after Virginia Tech laid such a massive egg against mm-hmm. a Wake Forest. You have to wonder how mentally they'll be ready for this game. Right. Uh, my I, third, yeah, my third pick is going to be the late game in the Mountain West, which shows you that I have learned absolutely nothing uh, from previous transgressions. I'm going with Nevada. I'm going to take the minus 14 against UNLV. I know before the show we were talking about bottom 10 teams in the uh, FBS. We didn't mention UNLV, and uh, they definitely deserve at least bare minimum an honorable mention. They're not, they're not good. They're, not they're good awful all. every year. I know that they ended up getting run out against uh, a pretty good San Diego State team. So I do think that even though they only scored six points, San Diego State has very good defense. But you lose 34 to six, you have 186 total yards of offense and you give up 34 to San Diego State. Now, I know that San Diego State, of course, had the ball a lot. San Diego State has always had a terrible offense, and they cannot throw the ball this year at all, and if they still score 34 against UNLV. Meanwhile, Hawaii – not Hawaii, sorry, uh, Nevada uh, – plays like Hawaii in recent years. They can just sling the ball around. Carson Strong, very solid quarterback. He threw over 400-plus yards against Wyoming. Uh, he was very good. Of course, they almost blew the game late. 420 yards, four uh, four passing touchdowns. I just think they're going to throw it around the playground against UNLV. And UNLV, who I think is awful, I think will get blown out because I think this Nevada team who, make a, who made a bowl game last year but was a little bit underwhelming. I think this team's probably going to score 40 against UNLV. I think UNLV will probably score 17. I, I don't think UNLV in any given game can be projected to score 20 points. Yeah, the fighting tarks. The fighting tarks are not good. They're not. They're not good at all. They, they've been. A, they're. 
consistently a, a bottom team there in the Mountain West. I don't think their, all, their offense got worse because Armani Rogers, who was their starting quarterback for what feels like two decades, finally left. Right. So they don't even have a quarterback now. So if you're looking at games right now and how to project them, I don't think UNLV is expected to score more than 17 points in any given conference game. I know that Nevada's defense isn't very good, but UNLV just can't move the ball. How do you go through an entire game? I know San Jose defense is good once again. 186 total yards of offense? What are you kidding me? Yeah, they'll uh, they're going to uh, they're going to have one game if UNLV follows the pattern. They're going to have one game where they step up, inexplicably play well, and either get the win or they get the cover. I don't think this is that game. I think Nevada is going to throw for 400 plus and probably drop 35 on their heads. Yeah, it's a it's a rivalry game. And uh, it's being yeah, played it's, in the Raiders' new stadium, so you do have a very nice new venue, uh, which UNLV football fans can show up for. The ironic part is that who is a UNLV football fan, so I don't know if that matters. It'll be but, the, I think it's going to be the first time they've had state fans in that game, in that stadium. Uh, yes, uh, it's supposed to be, uh, I want to say around 2000, maybe a little bit more, but once again, it's a UNLV football, so I don't know how many people actually show up for that game, but. Yeah. I just think Nevada's better, so I don't think it matters. Hey, you know that you know I talked about the the, the uh, UNLV steps up or, or once about once a year and plays a game and yep. beats a team that's good. Yeah, you know who it was last year? No idea. Yeah. It was Nevada. It was Nevada. Okay. So why they beat Nevada? Yeah, they beat Nevada. In good for me, revenge spot. Sure. So yeah, good for me. You got a revenge spot against one of the worst teams in the FBS. A revenge rivalry spot. You got to like that. You really do. Yeah. So. The way that I'm trying to avoid the two and one is that I got a minus seven to minus 14. So you got a couple push draws out there. No, but in reality, I just like the, uh, the overall numbers here. I just think Nevada is the much better team. UNLV is awful. All right. So you went, you went all chalk and I went, uh, I went two dogs in, in, in a chalk. So we'll, uh, yep. we'll see how, we'll see how that works out. Uh, don't forget to drop us a comment in the comment section. Let us know what your, what your best three are. See well, I you. usually go chalk. I know last week was a little bit different because I took Cincinnati because I thought they should have been favored. And mm-hmm. they won by 29 points, so they clearly should have been favored. But I usually look chalk. Uh, and it's kind of a situation where, of course, you can take underdogs if you think that there's a good spot. But I think that this early in the season, there's a lot of teams that are mispriced. And I think that if you look at favorites, uh, especially within the one touchdown range usually, some of these lines are just very, very off, which is the beauty of college football because you have so many games. Yeah. So much uncertainty that some teams might be overvalued in the marketplace. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, that's why I like playing a lot of a lot of the, the games down the card that mm-hmm. uh, don't get a lot of action and they're mispriced. A lot of a lot of WTF, Scott, wrong team favored. So yep. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for Scott and I. Uh, make sure you check us out each and every week as we do this. Uh, probably my my most uh, my the segment I like doing the best is the, probably the show I enjoy the most. So we'll see what happens. Can I can I take can I uh, can I catch up? Can I actually get a, a, a get a three and zero week here and make a little damage? Make up a little ground. We'll see what happens. What do you, um, say, my, what do you say my record was? 13 and 8? 13 and 8, yeah. Not bad. I'll take it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's profitable. That's, uh, that's, that's good to go all day long there, my friend. Nothing, mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. You're running about uh, 62% or so, 63%. Something like that. Yeah, that's fine. That'll make you money. That'll make you money all year long. So uh, if you're looking for information into these games or any other college games, of course, the spot to be is winnersandwiners.com. Deep dives into every game, every single day. Always free, by the way. What a great resource for absolutely nada. It is free, ladies and gentlemen. So check that out, if you will. Uh, and don't forget to check us out each and every day as we do this. Uh, we do our show every 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 day, Scott. Every, every day we got a show out there. So, except, uh, except Yeah, except Sundays. But we do the NFL show early for that. Yeah, we have a show for Sundays. I mean, we yep. don't do it on Sundays. But, yeah, we, we cover every day. So there you go. For myself. For Scott Rice Show, we appreciate you guys stopping by. For all of us over here at Winners and Winners, hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. And we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Take care, everybody.